So you were you were really by by being here at that period, you were really in, in the midst of hi living history. I mean, the, some of the names you mentioned: George Washington Carver, Paul Robeson, Marian Anderson, what, people who came through uh, that you had contact with or you got to see. I mean, it sounds like a really exciting kind of environment to be in. Well, it it, it depends on what you were doing because I was in the choir. And being an athlete and singing in the uh, the famous choir, everybody you didn't have the theaters in the in the convention halls to go to then. So most of the artists came to the university or to the college campus. At least Tuskegee, they, they brought everything to you. You didn't have to go out. Everything came to you here on the campus. Even your bands and things and dances, they came here on the campus. So being here and being in the choir, all those people who uh, was in the concert, they had to warm up. And we were the warm up background. Not it when while they were doing their uh, concert, but to warm them up for their concert. And we got a chance to sing with them. We got a chance to uh, see them, to meet them. And uh, that's, that's, I mean, it's so, it's so uh, inspiring just to hear you talk about it. it did you, did this kind of exposure to all of these uh, highly accomplished people, professors, artists, and whatever, did it change your view of what you could do with yourself in your life? I mean. Did did you did you decide? Well, I, I, it's not enough for me to be Shirley Temple. I want to be George Washington Carver. I mean, how did it affect you? Well, it just made me a better person to uh, uh, really to look above just uh, wanting to be like this person, wanting to be what I could be. You know. I didn't want to lose anything. I wanted to be famous, but God didn't have that in mind for me to be a dancer. Now, I was in New York City, honey, and dancing on the streets in New York City, but that wasn't my calling from God. My wait, wait, now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you can't just slide that in and move on. <laughs> I told you I came from a, from folk preachers now. <laughs> the background of folk preachers now. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that religion is still there. Uh huh. Yeah, I know. I, I saw you try to slip that one right there, you know. <laughs> Tell me about that. You were in New York dancing on the street. <laughs> yes, you <it> was. <laughs> you pulled out at the uh, Union Station. And Riskin Hawkins and his band was on the train, and they came off, you know, the horns tuning, you know, getting ready to go on where they were going to uh, play for that night. And I think during that time they had Savoy and the, uh, what was it, Savoy and another one, another uh, Hallway Blacks mm -hmm. was going. And that music sounds so good, and I was out there, that's just a boogie. And my friend, one of my track uh, our teammates, she teased me about it all the time. Man. Alice started everything up there in New York City, out there, just a boogie. <laughs> but they, the, the coach didn't say anything to us because we were just hearing the music. We was out there dancing among ourselves. And then we went on to the Y, because that's where we were staying in New York, at the Y. And uh, they went on where they were going because we couldn't go where they were going. I think it was the Savoy where they were playing. But where there was music, that was Alice. <laughs> and it's still where Alice is. 